Hello and welcome to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I'm your host, Gabe Peterson, and this is the place investors go to gain actionable advice, learn about current market trends, and hear war stories from other professional investors out there in the field today. Before we get started, I have two quick housekeeping items for you. First, if you like this episode, we would very much appreciate a like, subscribe, and share. It is the best way to support the show and keep it running far into the future. Second, if you're a new investor looking to get started in real estate or an experienced investor looking to take your investing to the next level, I've created an ebook just for you that will cover how to find deals that are actually deals, how to finance those deals with little to no money down, and how to exit those deals for maximum value. On top of that, I throw in an insane amount of free bonuses that you'll have access to once you buy the ebook. All I charge is our admin costs to keep this show running. So if you're serious about real estate investing and want to create both active and passive income as an investor, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com and click on the button that says, get the ebook in the upper right-hand corner to grab yourself a copy. With that said, let's dive right in. Today, we have a very special guest with us ready to drop some investor knowledge on you. So buckle up, grab your pen and paper and enjoy the ride. All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. Today, we got Corey Geary with us. Corey is a nationwide seven-figure wholesaler, fix and flipper, and novation deal maker. I am super excited to have him here. Corey, thank you very much for hopping on the show. Thanks, Gabe. I appreciate you having me. I'm truly honored and blessed to be here today. Absolutely. So I told you before we hopped on here, we always start with stories. We love how people got from point A to point B. I'm sure you got a good one. Why don't you, how'd you get started in uh, real estate in the first place? Absolutely, man. So uh, when I got into real estate at the time, I was a blackjack dealer at the casino dealing <laughs> cards for a living. And I did it. I, I was a dealer for 17 years, did it way too long, just got wow. way too complacent in that job. And uh, it was good money. You know, I was making six figures a year because it's tip money you make. Wow. And okay. uh, I had managed to save some money up, you know, throughout that journey. And I'm sitting there watching that flip or flop show with Tarek Al Musa. And I had my girlfriend at the time was a part-time realtor, part-time blackjack dealer. She was like, why don't you list a house or why don't you flip a house so I can list it? And I was like, I don't know. Why don't I flip a house? I mean, it looks easy enough. 30 minutes, make $80,000, <laughs> right? And uh, it always looks too easy. <laughs> it always does, dude, especially on that show. Uh, literally the next morning, I'm running around the neighborhood on my morning run. And I see one of those bandit signs that says, uh, mm. fix and flip, buy price, you know, 250 ARV, uh, 380. It was a, from a local company here called uh, uh, Net Worth Realty. And I, I stopped at my morning run. I called that phone number. I bought that house. It wow, took, off a bandit sign. That's off a bandit that's sign. Because <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it was in my head from the night before of having that conversation with my girlfriend. And so I bought the house. It took me six months to flip that house, and I made eight thousand dollars. That was Ooh. my very first deal. That seems like a very common, uh, common story for people just getting into it. They watch something like HGTV, like whatever, any of those shows. They're like, this is easy. It takes 30 minutes. I just go in, go out, and I get a million dollars. But um, never comes forward, out that way. Unfortunately, a little bit. I, I, I got a second deal from a wholesaler. I'm going to local Rias. I made 20 grand in that one. On my third deal, I partnered with somebody at the casino. We bought four houses all at once. We ended up having to use a new contractor because the old contractor sucked, but the new contractor was even worse. And he took us to the cleaners and I lost a quarter million dollars on that, on those oh, four houses. Man, so I lost sucks. all my 401k money from the casino. I lost my pre, you know, previous flip money and my savings. And so it kind of set me back to zero and I didn't want to give up. And I was like, man, I'm wondering how these wholesalers get deals. And so I Googled how do wholesalers get deals? Literally Googled it. And Mr. Sean Terry popped up. And that's how my wholesaling real estate journey started. So I bought his course. And I started putting out bandit signs myself, started doing some direct mail. And it took me a few months, but I got my first deal. And I made $10,000 on my first deal. Damn, so. <laughs> that is an awesome story. Blackjack dealer. I had no idea they made that much money. It's just all from tips. Yeah, depending on where you're working at, right? So like in Nevada, it's mainly tip pool. 
So it's harder to make that kind of money. But I hear in Arizona and a lot of the Indian casinos, you take your own tips. So you go out there and hustle the tables and you keep what you drop. So that's how you're able to make really good money in those joints. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, when I quit there, uh, my last year, I made 147000 Wow. That yeah. is crazy. Huh. Yeah, working six hours a night. That's why I got so complacent in that job. You know, I was just like drifting through life, partying, you know, hanging out with other dealers on my days off party. I mean, it was easy, easy money, right? And you just get comfortable with it. And uh, so, you know, I got stuck in it for a long time. And I, I always say real estate saved my life because it kind of woke me up and pulled me out of that lifestyle and what is able to allow me to grow in so many different areas of my life. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it sounds like, I mean, it gave you the financial backing, at least to get into those first few deals. Um, it what, did, how did, right. and I, right. you know, I, I hate it when people go through a hard time, obviously I don't want to put anything bad on someone, but it's those experiences like your experience with the contractor that really kind of opens your eyes and gives you a little less naivety, a little bit more maturity when you're in the real estate game. Um, how did that happen? How did it go about where the contractor kind of took well, you for all your worth there? Yeah, we tried suing them and then we got maybe around like, I don't know, 30 grand, 40 grand back, you know, from him. And then I was able to write a lot of that off my taxes. So obviously I got a lot of money back from the government. Yep. So, and it, unfortunately he passed last year. Uh, I even gave money to his family. You know, I, I, I held no grudges against him. Yep. You know, I consider it to be my fault. I didn't do my due diligence on him. I didn't check him against the ROC. You know, I didn't call up previous clients. You know, I was a newbie and he saw yep. a mark on our head and it was like, what are you going to do? Right. And he, what are you going to do? You can't get money. What's that old saying? Getting blood out of a turn turn up or rock. I can't remember what the old saying is, but you can't <laughs> get money out of somebody if they don't have it. Yep. And he would pay me, pay us a little bit here and there as he would do deals. Um, but, you know, it is what it yep. is. And like I said, you know, it was a learning lesson. Yeah. And you exactly. You found the lesson in the, uh, you found the silver lining. It sounds like you learned when you're dealing with contractors, you have to do your due diligence. Do oh, not take a yeah. contractor on face value. Um, there's, there's a ton of them. There's really good ones. Treat them like gold, yes, but there's also the ones. Now. Yep, exactly. Yes. Awesome. So you, you were doing your flips, you finally got into wholesaling. Uh, and that is, I mean, that is a game unto itself. It sounds like you got in there through a course, um, which is great. I always recommend people getting, at least getting a, an understanding, maybe a framework to work with when they get into any, any specific asset and any specific strategy in real estate. Um, yours was wholesaling. Tell us about that. How did you first get into wholesaling and what was, uh, what were the few, first few deals like? Yeah, for sure, man. So, uh, first few, de first few deals, I was just basically JV in with all the wholesalers to sell them. And it was just, you know, I was getting a deal here and there. And then I, uh, I joined a mentorship with a coach and he, he told me, you gotta do your cold calling. And so what I had did is I took my living room of my house. I mean, I, I was single at the time and I had no kids at the time. And I built a call floor in my house. I put a bunch of cubicles in my house, hired college wow. kids to come into my house and cold call for me why, so I can get leads, so I can go lock up deals. And that went on for about a year and a half. Wow. So I ran a call floor out of my house while I was being doing the real estate side. And so I, I ran the call floor, did real estate and worked in the casino at night for a whole year and a half, got no Jesus. sleep. It was brutal. And then eventually, eventually I ended up quitting the casino and I scratched the call floor model. We don't do that at all anymore. We do all our, our uh, advertising through Google ads, PPC, because we're nationwide. Yep. Um, but yeah, so that's how I, I kind of transitioned and, and, and uh, we were probably doing between five and 10 deals a month. I was part of many, I was probably about two or three different masterminds at the time, had a mentor. And then I started hearing about people doing the nationwide wholesaling. Mm. And I, I was like, all right, I, I want to try this. And I ended up learning Google ads, PPC, brought it in house and then pivoted to nationwide in probably early 2020. Okay. Um, it was very, very difficult at first. I would say out of every five deals we get, one would close just because we weren't good at underwriting nationwide. We weren't good at finding buyers nationwide. So it was very difficult. And I ran in the red the first few months. And I always recommend to anybody, if you go nationwide, make it an arm of your business. Don't make it your main, your main bread and butter. Because if you turn off what's feeding you and what's paying the electricity bill, you know, you're going to go in the red if you don't know how to do it. And that's what happened to us. Uh, yep. But we ended, up, we ended up catching traction and we started uh, making some money and we started closing deals. And then uh, I was in a mastermind 
and uh, I heard about some somebody talking about novations. And he did the presentation on it. And what he was doing was he, he was locking up deals and then uh, 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 almost re at retail, not at retail, but a little bit under, and selling these deals on the MLS to retail buyers who have conventional FHA and VA financing. And it very, it fascinated the crap out of me because we were doing this nationwide model and I would get a lot of these rural leads that there was no investor activity in, but there was MLS activity. And also a lot of our houses that come in are great houses because we do PPC. So they're good livable houses. These people aren't as motivated as, our, as a, if you do a, a target at a stress list. They are reaching out to you, so they want to sell. I love that part. But the, the, the houses aren't as distressed as they, you, uh, if you're doing like cold calling or texting or something like that. And so it really fascinated me that this guy was doing novation. So I took it upon myself, went out to the industry. There are a couple of people who teach it. Uh, I bought their courses, and I just kind of compilated my own strategy, pieced it together, and trailblazed the nationwide novation deal making. And so now I, I run a group, uh, New Age Wholesaling. We teach how to do no, uh, novations nationwide with PPCs, our main marketing strategy. And we also have a course that teaches novation, which is novationnation.com. And uh, it's the main bread and butter of our business now. We're a novation company first, wholesale second. So we're always pitching novation first to try to get the seller to do the novation before we do wholesale. Unless we know the, the seller has to have the money like next week, you know, there, there's a time constraint or the house is like, you know, burnt down or something, you know, it's, it's, it needs a lot of repairs. Then we'll go ahead and do the wholesale route. But other than that, we're always pushing for novations. Huh. That's it. A lot of questions kind of popped up into my mind there. Um, before I got into commercial, I, I, I was, or I attempted national wholesaling. It is very difficult, uh, just because exactly what you were talking about, or at least I found it difficult. Um, you know, I didn't have, you have to have a buyer in every location that you find the deal. You have to know how to underwrite that location. And I was doing it the same way PPC. Um, but it was just, it was really difficult to do national wholesaling. And so you kind of found your route around that, which is novations. Is that, are you double closing or how is that actually working? No, you don't have to double close it. Um, what we do is just, so you get the purchase agreement with the seller. And let me explain what a novation is too. A novation means replacement of contracts. That's the legal terminology. Uh, where in wholesaling, you're assigning the deal. So you're staying in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's an assignment of contract. Novation is replacement of contract. So you're going to get the AB contract. You're going to get a novation agreement. And then you get an attorney of fact. That is the, the three instruments you need in the front side. And then with the attorney, in fact, that gives you the capability to list the property on the MLS and act as a seller and sign all the offers that are coming in. So once you get the property in the contract with a new buyer, that, that BC contract is going to trump the AB contract. It replaces, it novates that AB contract. Now, people are asking you, probably were thinking, well, how do you get paid then? What we do is now we put a notice of interest on the property. That notice of interest acts like a lien. So when it goes into uh, the financing underwriting, they approve our payoff because it's a lien on the property. And we just do a release of interest at closing to get paid. So that's how we, we, do, we conduct the whole deal. That's like a 30,000 foot overview. There's a lot more to it than that. I, you have to have the correct paperwork. I spend thousands of dollars uh, with attorneys drafting up the correct paperwork. Um, so it, it, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Interesting. Okay. And using this, this method, you don't have to be an agent broker in the area. You don't have no, to have No, because you're going to get someone to represent you. We get realtors to represent us in that area, or we use a flat fee listing company to uh, list a property and represent us. Gotcha. Interesting. Okay. And so with this method, you were able to go national. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you still have the underwriting issue. Well, no, you don't because you're, you're on. Well, you still retail. need to build a comp properties, but we've yeah. gotten really good at that. I mean, uh, underwriting just comes with repetition, comp yeah. and deals over and over and over. And we've gotten really good at comp and deals nationwide. So it's just a matter of like playing in that sandbox where before it was just like, all I knew was Phoenix, Arizona. I just knew this little market here. And I still, if you give me some cross streets here, I'd tell you like, oh, the houses over there are going for X, Y, Z, because I've done so many fix and flips in my own local market. Um, but with no, you know, with nationwide, it's a little bit more difficult. You just got to do, it just comes from experience. Yep. Yep. For sure. 
And uh, so is PPC, is that still your main method of, of generating leads? Absolutely. I run my own PPC in-house and that's what we also teach it in our mastermind. I feel like you need to run your own PPC. Otherwise, you know, these companies you run it for you don't care about your dollar the way you care about it. Yeah. And it costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money. <laughs> it puts you right in the red from the, from the get-go. Yeah, absolutely. Do you guys, uh, I mean, PPC is one avenue of digital marketing. Do you do any like Facebook ads? Um, anything we don't. like that? Yelp, we Yelp. don't. We do, we, we do do a little bit of cold calling. I outsource it through a company out of Columbia, uh, Lamasu Leads. We do a little bit with those guys, a little bit of texting, but the bulk of it is PPC. We experiment around with Facebook ads before, but we found that the leads are not... Uh, or not very good. Yeah, they're not yeah. good quality. Uh, cold call leads are actually better quality than the Facebook leads. But what we find, some people might have cracked the code on it. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's interesting how each uh, each strategy, each asset class has its own marketing method that works the best. Um, like for mobile home parks, mailers work amazing for yep. single family PPC. Uh, for, for self-storage, I do a lot of uh, text marketing. And so there's something there's a key for everything out there. I love it. There is. All right. I uh, just took a peek at the clock. We do need to move into the quick question round. Are okay. you ready? I'm ready. Perfect. Um, it starts out with books. I'm a big bookie. So if you could give Me us too. two recommendations, one for real estate and one for general life wisdom. Uh, gen general life wisdom. Let's start there. I mean, the best one out there is obviously for me is going to be, uh, 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 let me think of, uh, ne uh, what's it called? It's, it's, it's a Napoleon Hill book, Outwitting the Devil. There we go. Ah, yep. Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. You know, everyone recommends uh, uh, think, think and Grow Rich. I feel like Outwitting the Devil is more of a modern version of Think and Grow Rich. And that book has just changed my life. I've read it five times and the concepts in there and the mindset shift that you'll get out of that book is amazing. Nice. Absolutely amazing for real estate. You know, a couple books, obviously in real estate, you got to be really good at negotiation. So never split the difference by Chris Voss. It was probably my, one of my best books I've read that helped me in my real estate journey. Obviously you can read books like rich dad, poor dad, which are all good. But I mean, without negotiations and know how to talk to people, that's the key element to real estate. And so that's why I'd say Chris Voss never split the difference there. Perfect. Never split the difference. Outwitting the devil. I've multiple people have suggested outwitting the devil. I haven't picked it up yet, but um, I've heard it's pretty read good. Read it. I'll tell you when you read it. Do it. Also listen to it on Audible because the devil's voice on Audible uh, yeah. it brings the book to life. Nice. I love it. <laughs> All right, moving on. Um, you're nationwide. I mean, you you market nationally, so this is going to be a good question for you. Uh, there. Are I don't know how many square miles out there of land and property to purchase, which means there's a lot of opportunity. Um, which marketplace outside of your own, outside of Phoenix, are you most excited to uh, to invest in next? Oh boy, uh, a few of them. So what the best places where we get ROI out of right now are Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. We love that whole that whole area right there. We get amazing deals out of there. Now our biggest spreads come out of Washington and California. I have mm -hmm. not done a deal under $50,000 in California. So yeah, it makes sense. But you just don't get, a, you don't get the deal flow, the amount of uh, leads and the amount of deals out of those areas that you do over on the East coast. Makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Florida, South Carolina, Georgia. Um, I've been really interested First of all, Charleston is my absolute favorite city. And so I just love that yeah. area. Really want to find a self-storage. So if you hear anybody that owns ones down there, I will I will buy it from you. Okay. I'll keep you in the loop. Yep. <laughs> all right. Next question. This one is for your younger self. So if you could point or go back to the Corey who had still working those blackjack tables, um, you know, he was just loving his life going forward. Didn't know anything about real estate. Go to him, look him in the eye, give him one piece of advice moving forward. Man, I, I would, uh, I would go back and tell myself, start looking into self development, start reading books, open your mind up, get out of this, stop being in that cycle of just drifting through life, and not trying to, you know, get better. I mean, I would, if I would have started my journey, in my 20s that I started, because I started late, I was like, probably 38, 39, 45. Now, you know, if I had started my 20s, I would be a multi, multi millionaire by the time of my late 30s, by the time I got started. So I would have just said, hey, stop what you're doing, stop with the partying, 
here's a couple books to read, you know, obviously outwitting the devil, think and grow rich, stuff like that. You know, go to a Tony Robbins event, start looking, you know, into some, some inner self-development to see what path you want to go. It, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be real estate back then, but just something to kind of wake me up from my just party lifestyle and doing the same thing. That was my biggest, you know, I just got way too complacent. Yep, absolutely. Get started early. Um, and on the flip side of that, it's never too late to start. You started, what'd you say, 38, 39? Um, yeah. you're, you're doing great now. And so wherever you are right now, get started. Now That's is the it. perfect and time to do it. And then 10 years from now, it'll be even better, right? It's just, uh, it compounds. The compound effect, not a great book. <laughs> perfect. There you go. All right, next question. Um, we are all gifted with something that we uniquely can do very well. Um, nobody is outside of this, you included. And so what is your Superman strength? What is the thing that you feel you are exceptional at? In business, it's definitely just copy and paste. I am very good at seeing what other people are doing to be successful and copying and pasting that. And that's why I've been such an advocate of mentorship and masterminds. Because I want to see what everyone else is doing. I want to see exactly how to crack the code. If somebody invented the wheel, I don't want to go off and try to reinvent it. So I'm excellent at copy and pasting. You know, just in general life, I'm very good at networking. I'm a very social person. I'm very outgoing. I got massive amounts of energy. So that's kind of like my superpower just in general in life. So perfect. I love it. You do not need to reinvent the wheel. The wheel has been invented. Just go out there, take a look and do it yourself. Do it yourself. Yep. Copy <laughs> and paste. All right. Which brings us to the last question. You've given us a lot of good advice, a lot of good wisdom. I'm sure people out there want to reach out, um, learn a little bit about Novations. So uh, what is the best way for them to do that? Yeah. A couple best places, man. If you want to just reach out, reach out directly to me is you can follow me on Facebook, Corey Geary. I am very active on there. Always dropping content, always, you know, doing what I uh, documenting my journey. And then on Instagram, the Corey Geary is where I'm at as far as, you know, putting posts up and just talking about novations, you know, uh, obviously there's the new age wholesaling group, which is just, you know, www.newagewholesaling.com. And then we have the novation course, which is, uh, www.novationnation.com. So yeah, reach out to me. I, I answer my own DMS. I don't have a VA on there answering them. So you can DM me on Facebook and I'll be the one answering it. Perfect. So if you want to reach out to Corey, I will put those URLs in the show notes. Just click the more in the description. It'll pop down the full description and there you can find Corey's URLs. So Corey, thank you very much for hopping on the show today. I appreciate it, Gabe. It was an honor. Absolutely. And for everybody else who's here with us today, thank you guys for showing up. You are the reason we do this. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, reach out to me, Gabe at the real estate investing club.com. Other than that, I hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic week. Keep rocking real estate, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Real Estate Investing Club. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode as much as I enjoyed putting it on, and we're able to pull some actionable advice that you can apply in your own investing today in the field. Before you go, we have a gift for you. If you're a new investor looking to get started or an established investor looking to invest, take your investing to the next level. I've created an ebook just for you available on our website. This ebook, ebook will cover how I was able to create both active and passive income in real estate with very little money to start with. In it, I will address the three most often cited obstacles new and veteran investors run into by showing you how to find deals that are actually deals how to finance a deal with little to no money down and how to exit those deals for maximum value. And if you get the ebook today, I am throwing in a bundle of bonuses, seven of them to be exact. The first one will be the off-market lead generation blueprint, which will take you through the exact systems and processes we use to generate off-market leads like clockwork, which is the most important skill when it comes to creating wealth in real estate. The second bonus is the A to Z REI systems and vendors guide, which will allow you to peek under the hood of our business and see the exact tools, systems, and even the vendors we use to see the success that we do. And the third bonus is the top 100 best performing keywords pack, which is which will give you the exact keywords we use to target motivated sellers online using PPC ads. The fourth bundle is, or the first fourth bonus is our contracts bundle for wholesaling and renting real estate, which will give you access to all the contracts we use in the field to execute all different types of transactions. 
After that is the investor's quick analysis calculator and offer tool, which will allow you to quickly calculate whether a deal is an actual deal and will allow you to create an offer automatically with, from those calculations. This is a lot, of, uh, a lot of bonuses that I said. I'm just going to keep going down the list. Number six is the investor's daily success tracker, which is a tracker you can use to ensure you are taking the right actions day in and day out to reach your financial goals in real estate. And the last bonus is the wholesaler's template for quick assignment cash, which will give you the templates we use to present our wholesale deals professionally and efficiently to our buyers. Whew, that is a bundle. So it's a mouthful. You get all of those bonuses for free when you download the ebook. All we charge is the admin cost to run the show. So if you're interested in the ebook and the bonus bundle, head on over to the website at therealestateinvestingclub.com. Click on get the ebook bundle at the top of the page to take advantage of that deal. And with that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and even better week. Keep rocking real estate. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank <music> you.